Hey everybody, it's Party Elite, and today we're checking out Lakeburg Legacies, a gorgeous game that I've been looking forward to ever since it was first revealed that I finally had a chance to play during Steam Next Fest. This game has such a fresh take on a very familiar genre, I just had to showcase it on the channel, especially because I had such a blast playing it during Next Fest. So, at its core, the game is a colony management game. You're dealing with building buildings, upgrading them, assigning workers optimally, training them, so on and so forth, but all of that is built on the foundation of the concept of courtships. So it's a bit of a dating sim in that way. It borrows ideas from that genre, I guess, and it blends them with, again, those mechanics of colony management, you know, building and upgrading structures, taking care of resources, so on and so forth. It is such a unique and fresh take. I just needed to make sure people knew this game existed, and so I wanted to showcase it on the channel. And folks, if you like what you see here today, Please don't hesitate to wishlist the game on Steam, because that's a great way to show support to independent developers especially, and it's a great way to stay up to date with the dev cycle. I believe Lakeburg Legacies is planning on releasing later this year, so having it on your wishlist is a great way to, again, stay up to date with that. And if you like seeing fresh games in your feed, if you like colony management, city building, sim, and strategy games, you might want to consider subscribing to this channel too. With all that said and done, and with no more time to waste, let's go ahead and dive on in to a fresh new game of Lakeburg Legacies. So, as I kind of implied earlier, I've played a little bit of this during Steam Next Fest, and I'm fairly confident and comfortable with the core concepts of the game. So, I'm not going to go through all these tutorial bits over here, and instead, I'll explain mechanics as they become relevant as we play. But, with that said, I also want to make clear that I didn't play too deep into the game because I was having so much fun, and I wanted to make sure that if there are any twists or turns or surprises, but we could experience them together over the course of this playthrough session today. So let's go ahead and close this and take a look at, yes, our first steps. As you can see, it's a fairly large plot of land where our city is going to exist. We start with just this Lumberjack's Lodge, and in order to build the next building, we need to accumulate a certain amount of wood. And as you might imagine, in order to do so, we have to actually assign somebody to work at the Lumberjack's Lodge to produce the wood. So far, we only have Ursilda over here as our one and only citizen, and uh, she actually has a huge, huge variety of stats and elements that we need to take into consideration. So let's pause for a moment so that her uh, needs don't keep uh, causing us issues. We want to just take a look at the character sheet and, uh, and make sure we understand what's going on. So first of all, over here you can see a handful of traits with regards to their strength, intelligence, dexterity, and charisma. Their numbers here determine what they're good or bad at, alongside their numbers down over here. So, each person obviously has various strengths and weaknesses, and accordingly, they'll have potential across different fields. So, for example, Ursilda here is a, you know, middling lumberjack, a somewhat poorer mason, and a pretty terrible builder. So typically, you'll want Ursilda to be working as a lumberjack, because that's the thing she can do best. Over time, she might improve her skills and, you know, have a better output as a result. Or you might find somebody who's better at the job, and so you'll replace Ursilda with somebody else and hope that Ursilda leaves because she's not really good at too much. Unfortunately, we've got a really bad uh, dice roll over here uh, to kick us off. But this first citizen is randomly generated. Apart from their stats and traits and all this kind of stuff over here, you can also find their relationships. Again, at its core, this game is about courtship. So here you'll find who they're married to, who their children are, who they're flirting with, etc., etc. Yes, things get kind of uh, spicy let's call it at times, and apart from that you can also see their inheritance. So again, you're obviously going to be dealing with multiple generations, and you're going to be dealing with parentage, and partners, and exes, and children, and so on and so forth, so there's a lot to look at, but we'll look at this more when it becomes more relevant. For the time being, let's assign Ursilda as our lumberjack, and because she's just sort of middling at it, her output is actually not as great as it could be if she was better at it. Again, as determined by her athletics and strength skills and traits, right? So, uh, she's not the best at it, but it's the only option we have so far. Uh, down the line, we'll replace her with somebody else, perhaps, or maybe we'll upgrade the building. Because, again, on the side over here, you can see, for the Lumberjack specifically, we can actually improve the efficiency, resulting in a higher base production, or as with many buildings, we can improve working conditions. And this will have an impact on the characters who are working there uh, and their morale, as well as their life expectancy. Again, as a game about relationships, life expectancy has sort of a unique role to play, which I think is rather interesting. O other buildings will have other options as well, by the way, like uh, adding additional types of output and so on and so forth. But we'll look at that when it uh, comes up. And separately as well, when you eventually start having children in your little village, uh, you'll be able to 
uh, teach them through mentorship so that future generations will have replacement, you know, lumberjacks and uh, fishermen and so on and so forth. But that can't happen when she's all on her own. So first of all, let's go ahead and uh, let time move forward a little bit so we can accumulate a bit of wood and uh, get a house going. But as you can see, a house actually costs some wood. And apart from uh, the house itself, we also want to move towards building a farm, which costs some wood as well. Everything pretty much costs wood, as you can imagine. And down the line, we'll have many more resources to concern ourselves with. But the first order of business over here is to absolutely get Orsilda a home because uh, without that, she's going to get very upset, of course, and you don't want upset citizens. It's just like any other colony builder, right? So Ursilda has a home now, but she's rather lonely, and uh, eventually we'll want to do more than just uh, cut wood in our beautiful forested land. So in the interest of doing that, let's go ahead and seek out a uh, new relationship, a new opportunity to grow Ursilda's family. So here we have Tindra, which, I mean, what a name. I <laughs> had... I, uh, I got no words. Tindra, amazing. Let's go ahead and have uh, Ursilda here approach Tindra and seek out a potential soulmate. So when it comes to finding soulmates, my understanding is that their charisma, their age, and their uh, class, I suppose, let's call it, uh, play a bit of a role as to who they'll get along with, but it goes well beyond that. So let's go ahead and find a soulmate here. Uh, and we can either find one in Lakeburg if we have multiple uh, you know, uh, eligible bachelors, or, considering we, we don't, we can go ahead and, and seek additional people in the surroundings. Now, really quickly, I just want to say that if we don't want to build a relationship, we can instead just look at the neighboring villages and uh, see if people are available for recruitment, though it does cost uh, coin or gold in order to do that. So, not an option right now. Let's instead go ahead and take a look at Tindra's offerings. Let's find a soulmate and uh, let's go ahead and seek out a male soulmate from the surroundings. Our first option here is uh, Benjamin. Someone call the guard. That person just stole my heart, he says, which is an okay pickup line, I guess. And you can see all of his stats as well. So there's a few things you'll want to consider over here. You'll want to consider what the potential uh, match over here is good at. Like this guy's a middling jeweler, a middling livestock farmer, and a less than middling farmer. So not the best as far as offerings for your town, but he is an excellent match. And that's determined by their likes and dislikes and, you know, which ones match and which ones don't. And I find it absolutely hilarious that Benjamin likes public executions. <laughs> that might be my favorite one. They both dislike kittens, and I don't know how I feel about that. Uh, let's go ahead and say, no, nah, this doesn't work because we don't need a jeweler anytime soon. We'll need a farmer pretty soon, and he's not very good at that. So, uh, no, this doesn't work, and it'll cost us some resources over here, which we generate as we have high quality relationships and and, and 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 new children and stuff like that so we will generate more and more of this resource but it will also get more and more expensive to reject potential matches so you have to be very careful not to reject uh too uh you know uh too quickly but this guy is just not good enough for our town so nah he's not gonna do now we've got sigisbert a good bard middling baker and an equivalent healer still an excellent match but not good enough for our village nope there we go. All right. This guy's a middling farmer. Wow, I got a really bad set of rolls in, 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 in this playthrough. In my previous playthroughs when I was playing the demo, I was getting much better luck as far as our matches. But uh, now nah, this guy's not going to do either. This guy's a good innkeeper. Ah, just, no, I'm looking for a good farmer. At least a semi-decent farmer or a better lumberjack, maybe. Ah, still nothing. Still nothing. Ooh, this guy's a okay lumberjack. Kind of the same as uh, as Ursilda herself, so not really worth the replacement. Okay, this guy's a middling farmer. He'll have to do Rolf over here. Good affinity, so not excellent, but it's all right. I simply cannot understand why sunflowers don't turn towards you. My goodness. Take notes, I guess. Uh, but yeah, you can see their stats, you can see their traits. But when you're trying to make a match, it's very important to pay attention to likes and dislikes. And I'll explain why in a moment. So Ursilda likes divination, fashion, and dancing. She dislikes gossip, cuddles, and kittens. Whereas Rolf likes divination, which is a match. He likes silver and gold, and he likes reading. And he dislikes meditation, gossip, and dancing. So I'm going to try and remember that as we say yes to this okay match, I suppose. Because the next order of business is to actually sort of go on a couple of dates. So Ursilda and Rolf are spending time at the inn, emptying a few glasses. Will the warm atmosphere help them break the ice? Worrying that books may corrupt the young is something we could talk about, or say, what if we abolish the death penalty? I don't think either of them had any opinions about public executions, so let's try that. 
cool. So you can see here, we are generating a bond between these two characters. And if we get all three answers right, the bond is stronger. If we fail a couple, not so much. And the better the bond, the more likely they are to have children. And children, of course, add to your population. They, you know, provide a growing workforce, so on and so forth. Nonetheless, public executions are a barbaric and gore event. Rolf agrees with Ursilda wholeheartedly. Good stuff. They say, what about going up the hill to enjoy the moonlight? Orsilda and Rolf both enjoy the pale moonlight. This unique moment allows them to get to know each other better. We can accuse fat stray cats for every problem happening in the village. We know Orsilda doesn't like cats. I don't think Rolf has any opinion there. I seek a dancing partner for Lakeberg's next ball. If I recall correctly, Rolf doesn't like dancing. That's why you gotta remember those uh, affinities earlier. You can ask Tindra for, uh, for help, but it's extremely expensive and we can't afford it. Uh, I'm going to avoid talking about dancing. And let's accuse fat stray cats for every problem happening in the village instead. Let's try it. All right, our love is a little bit stronger. Everyone knows a black cat brings bad luck. Rosilda and Rolf are plotting together to get rid of those filthy, filthy beasts. Isn't that cute? Good stuff. Everything seems to be fine. Say, what about a boat ride on the lake? Romantic. Rosilda and Rolf are enjoying a boat ride on the lake's tranquil waters. Considering how romantic it is, wouldn't now be the ideal time to go for it? We could talk about the, pres the benefits of meditation to focus on present moments. Or we can talk about how gossip is a plague on any civilized society. If I recall correctly, Rolf does not like gossip. Am I remembering that right? Let's, uh, let's take a gamble over here. Our love is fairly secure, but it'd be nice to get a three for three. So let's try it. Beautiful. Excellent. Excellent. Rolf, who's been the target of much gossip, agrees with Ursilda wholeheartedly. Well, that's kind of sad. Rolf, I'm sorry to hear that, buddy. But... It's a match. Cool. So we have our first additional citizen. The love meter over here determines, again, their likelihood of, uh, of having a baby, as you can see with the tooltip over here, but it also impacts how much uh, resources they generate. The first one there, the hearts are love, like the same thing we were spending to, uh, to, to find a different match when they weren't working out. And the second one listed in this tooltip is prestige which I, truth be told, haven't found a use for yet in my previous playthrough, but I believe in the full game, prestige is kind of like what determines you winning. You want to accumulate prestige and ultimately crown a sovereign from Lakeburg. So uh, it'll be important to have, you know, good matches uh, in, in the actual full game. And affinity over here also is, uh, is a determinant with regards to how their relationship will evolve over time. Will they divorce? Will they, you know, cheat on each other? So on and so forth. Nonetheless, let us rejoice. We are gathered here today to celebrate the union between Ursilda and Rolf. Do you promise each other love, honesty, and fidelity until death do you part? We'll go with the I do. They're going to get married. Congratulations. And uh, with that, Rolf is now going to automatically move in with Ursilda, and they have a chance of having a baby. We can force it if we want to with enough uh, resource over here, or naturally over time, they'll have a chance of, uh, of let's call it, generating a child. And that child then will go through life. You know, they'll start as a baby. They'll become toddlers. We can uh, educate them through mentorship. They'll eventually become adults with their own traits and skills and abilities. And uh, they'll be assigned a place to work. And nonetheless, with enough uh, wood gathered here today, let's go ahead and build our farm. Go ahead and buy that. It's placed at a predetermined location. But as we look at the farm over here, we can assign Rolf as our uh, local farmer, and every 70 or so days, he'll produce some vegetables. With the right upgrade, we should be able to make this a multi-purpose farm to produce uh, wheat as well, and it's not too expensive. We have a decent amount of gold here, so why don't we go ahead and get that upgrade going right away, and as you can see now in the same time period, he'll produce some vegetables and some wheat as well. To that end, let's just take a quick look at Ursilda over here to see the uh, life space over here. Yes, as you can see, the uh, characters will all level up over time. I, I do believe this is just a matter of uh, time moving forward as each month progresses. As you can see, there's a plus 20. And, oh, what do we have here? Ha. I've been interrupted by Ernesto and his adorable uh, alpaca? Llama? Alpaca is kind of funnier for something that's, you know, like a, a pack mule. Alpa anyway, uh, a merchant full of gold and goods is coming from the southern road. Hey, it's Ernesto and his faithful companion. What are they offering this time? Greetings! Today I'm looking for 15 wood. I'm offering 224 gold in exchange. Deal? So this guy will come through every once in a while offering whatever resource he wants that you're almost always going to have, but not necessarily in the right quantity. And in exchange, he'll offer a fair bit of gold, which is used for quite a bit, including, yes, 
upgrading your buildings and acquiring people from the neighborhood without going through relationship building. So I'll say deal over here. That sounds good to me. And let's head back to the Lumberjacks Lodge and improve the efficiency over here just to make up for the fact that Ursilda is not that great. But as you can see, her skill, if memory serves me correctly, has improved a little bit. Or maybe it's always been like this. I, If I recall correctly, they can improve over time. But nonetheless, let's upgrade efficiency here. It's not a very hefty investment, and that's a huge change. And let's go ahead and do the same actually to our farm as well, because that'll improve the output of both vegetables and wheat. That sounds good to me. But back to what I was talking about. If we take a look at Ursilda over here, <laughs> I'll never be able to share what I'm trying to share here. The game will keep interrupting me. What do we have here? Oh no! Rolf and Orsilda have loved each other wholeheartedly for a very long time. To other villagers, there are none. They're the perfect couple. However, in the privacy of their home, things are a little complicated. Impotence. They can't have children. Wait, what? For the past few months, Rolf's passion has been thwarted by some physical inconvenience. Not knowing how or why, he no longer felt motivated to do the deed, and the feeling of impotence was embarrassing. Eventually, both lovers wondered what to do. Wait for the problem to pass? or seek aid. Ooh, interesting. I've never seen this event. So, as you can imagine, uh, events are a core part of, uh, of the gameplay experience here. There are a lot of random events that come up based on people's relationships, based on what buildings you have, based on events that are happening. Otherwise, it's great. And, and I've never seen this one before. Uh, so we could either ask for help, which gives us what? The energetic trait for Rolf Divine regarding the couple's relationship with Ursilda. It'll increase their affection. And uh, Orsilda will get the pleasantly surprised trait. Not sure exactly what that does, or what the energetic trait does either, but we can check afterwards. Or we can say it'll pass, which uh, improves affection, but doesn't add those traits. Let's go ahead and ask for help. There doesn't seem to be a cost to it, at least not one in resources, so ask for help. If someone knows anything about love, it's Tindra. Rolf and Orsilda went to see her. She provided them with a miracle remedy, some energizing blue tea. That very evening, after a few sips, Rolf recovered the passion he had in his youth, and both lovers enjoyed a pleasant night. Rolf's getting worried, though. Will they need the tea all the time? I'm sorry, this tea being blue is, uh, oh man. <laughs> it's his own little blue pill. I guess everything will be fine. Let's just take a quick peek over here at Ursilda. Let's pause, just so I can say what I've been trying to say. Let's look at Ursilda over here, who has pleasantly surprised, improving her morale, and also reducing her need for entertainment. Okay, gotcha. And Rolf, you've got... Uh, what, what, what did he get? I thought Energetic. There we go. Just can't stop. Ever. My lord. Uh, it improves his athletics, uh, but it also, uh, I guess, consumes more tools as far as our, uh, you know, supply is concerned because he's uh, got that much energy. Nonetheless, what was I talking about? Yes, as you can see. Orsilda is currently at level 2, Rolf is currently at level 1, uh, they will gain XP each month, leveling up higher and higher, and over time, as they level up, they'll need more and more things. So, for starters, they need wood, uh, and then eventually at level 2, they need vegetables as well, eventually they need wheat, they need, uh, what else, uh, uh, clothes, and, and all, all sorts of stuff. So, as you can see, you, you sort of need to uh, keep up with, uh, with, with productivity, because you're on a bit of a timeline. People keep leveling up over time. It's, it's not at your leisure, so you can't let things fall behind. Uh, and, and you can always see over here as well if their needs are being met or not, and it'll obviously have an impact on how happy they are and how well they're performing. Nonetheless, let's have time moving forward as we enter the new year. Perfect timing on that pause there, I guess. And what are we building next? Hunter's Cabin. 60 wood is needed. We're almost there. Produces uh, meat and leather. Fair enough. We should have that extra wood shortly, but we won't have anybody to work that new uh, building. So let's take a look at the neighborhood and see if anyone is worth bringing in. We got uh, none of these guys are really ideal for uh, for the work that's going to need to be done shortly. So let's wait these extra seven days and see what new set arrives. Because uh, again, um, it would be nice to get huh, people who are actually good uh, good at what we, we need. Um, I suppose we could get... Uh, Patrocle? 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 
Patrick, um, what? <laughs> I, I don't know how to pronounce that. Feel free to let me know in the comments. But uh, it may be a good idea to bring him in. He's a noble. Um, it'll cost us, what, uh, 16 gold. I can also uh, push to replace one of them. Let's go ahead and replace Margo here because I feel like a butcher might be relevant. Uh, because remember, it's not just about their potentials, it's about the stats from which those potentials are derived. He might be, you know, a really good butcher, but some of those stats and skills might translate into him being a good hunter. I don't think so necessarily, I don't have them memorized, but I just wanted to point that out to clarify. Nonetheless, let's replace Margo over here with Esther, who's a good farmer. Mm. Nah, let's stick with uh, Pat Patrocle, Patrocal. I don't know. Let's stick with Buddy over here. Recruit him for 16 gold, and now he's going to be available, but we can also seek out a pairing for him, find him a soulmate. Uh, let's go ahead and find him a lovely woman from the surroundings, and, uh, and hope for a Huntress. Okay, you know, two and a half stars isn't... <laughs> It's not that good, actually. Uh, nah, this isn't gonna work. But you can see how this is a bit more expensive now. For the previous match, it was just a cost of two. Now it's a cost of three. So you really have to be careful about overdoing it. But hey, their affinity isn't that great either. So now nah, this isn't gonna work for me. Priestess, Bard, Healer. No, thank you. Actress, Fisherwoman, Painter. Nope. Guard, Innkeeper, Merchant. Fisherwoman, Miner, Huntress. Nope. Former Muncher. Nah, 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 it's not gonna work. Come on, give me a give me a good give me a good huntress. Or or something worthwhile. Gatherer, livestock farmer, jeweler. Again, these obviously all get relevant at various points in time. We'll go with Brienne. Oh no, affinity bad. Nope, nope, I take that back. She was a decent huntress, but not a good match at all. And you don't want things to start going downhill too quickly, right? I'm sure we're going to find somebody that'll uh, fit the bill in a few different ways. We have a fair bit of this resource available to us, so I can take a, a few more chances here. But honestly, just not, uh, not seeing any luck over here, eh? Wow. How? Why? Why Why the session that I'm trying to record, why does that one have to play out like this? <laughs> uh, alright, you know what? I'm gonna go ahead and take, um, uh, maybe, maybe we'll take, maybe we'll take Beatrice or, no, Bad Affinity. I need to make sure about that as well. Seamstress, Carpenter, mm, something of a Lumberjack there, another Butcher, Bad Affinity though. Hunt oh, you know what? There we go. Good Huntress, Average Affinity. We'll make it happen. We'll make it happen. Bit of a risk, we'll make it happen. So, uh, Patrick Lee over here likes the countryside feasting and reading. He dislikes meditation, poetry, and cuddles. Whereas Catherine over here, uh, if I was a cat, I would love to purr my nine lives by your side. How romantic. Uh, she hates meditation. Uh, oh no, she loves meditation, gossip, and silver and gold. And she doesn't like muscles, cuddles, or divination. She dislikes cuddles, but if she were a cat, she would... Okay, I guess that's not necessarily cuddling. A anyway, anyway. Yes, this sounds good to me. Dislikes. Dislikes muscles, cuddles, and divination. I need to remember that. Likes meditation, gossip, silver, and gold. All right, let's try this. Average affinity isn't great, but we'll see what we can do. In the pale moonlight, this unique moment allows them to get to know each other better. Let's uh, relish in the latest rumors circulating Lakeburg, because Catherine likes gossip, right? So let's try that. Yeah, that'll get along nicely. Good stuff. Patrick Lee and Catherine thoroughly enjoy gossip, so long as the rumors aren't about them. Makes me think about Buddy, uh, that we just, uh, you know, did the whole relationship thing with previously, who's had many rumors spread about him. I wonder how that's gonna play out. Nonetheless, everything seems to be fine. What about a boat ride on the lake? Here, we can either talk about money, creating more problems than it solves. I believe Catherine likes silver and gold. Uh, oh, no cuddles before the third date, minimum. We know Catherine doesn't like cuddling, right? So let's try it. Good stuff, good stuff. What do you know? Catherine isn't very tactile either. It's possible to be happy without rubbing one's sweat and germs onto someone else's skin, you know. Uh, one way to put it, let's continue this charming rendezvous with a nice bottle. So they're spending time at the inn. What do we want to talk about? Ask if the cards provided Catherine insight into the future. Mm. Or everyone knows that big muscles imply a small brain. I mean, she hates muscles, so let's try that. And a tiny... Catherine doesn't end her sentence, but Patrick Lee got the message. Hey. It's love. Excellent. It's a match. Let's go ahead and uh, say the I do's and congratulate them as we bring in our Huntress and build a place for her to work. So let's buy the Huntress cabin over here and let's also make sure to actually build a house. Don't want to forget that. And let's move uh, Patrick Lee and Catherine in. They'll move in together. And separately, let's go ahead and assign Catherine 
as our uh, Huntress over here. Here again, we can actually upgrade the efficiency of the building just to make sure we're producing more resources. And, and, and Patrick Lee, what are you actually good at? Anything? A butcher. He's a good butcher. Seems as though there are no transferable skills. As you can see down over here when we're actually in the Hunter's Cabin, Patrick Lee just has the one star because it's reliant on dexterity and perception, and his perception is pathetic, uh, to say the least. Fair enough, fair enough. I'm sure we'll find a good job for him. I mean, he's good at what? Butchering, lumberjacking, and baking. Uh, lumberjacking, eh? About the same as Ursilda. I could unlock an additional worker slot and get uh, Patrick Lee working over here, just producing more wood. Sounds good. Maybe we'll find a different spot for him to be in the nearish future, uh, which would be what? Well, next up, we have the sewing workshop. Turns leather into clothes. I don't think that's just socks. I believe it's actually all clothes. It'll need 90 wood and 20 leather. So we're slowly but surely getting there. Let's make sure we're not uh, you know, waiting with our hands in our pockets. Let's try and find, I imagine, a seamstress. Well, hmm, hang on a second. We're looking at what? A sewing workshop. So a seamstress is, is what you'd want at a sewing workshop, right? Sewing workshop. Sewing, sewing, sewing. Seamstress it shall be, uh, or a seamster, sorry, John. Let's uh, go with that. Yeah, sure, recruit him. And as you can see, it becomes a bit more expensive to recruit additional people as you go further and further. So that's another thing you want to be careful about. You want to make sure you're somewhat self-sustaining as far as your population is concerned, uh, or you're generating a lot of wealth. Either way, let's recruit John over here, and let's find John a Jane after we build him a house. So there you go. And uh, let's go ahead and see if we can't match John with somebody. What's the risk of that? Well, the risk of doing it too prematurely is that all these resources are, of course, being consumed. And if you're not keeping your production up with consumption rates, you're eventually going to start seeing issues with people's needs not being met, right? So you want to make sure you're not rushing to matchmake if you don't absolutely need to. And maybe we can wait, actually. Maybe John can wait a little bit. Uh, we'll get the sewing workshop down and we'll see what's next. And well, we'll try and bring someone in accordingly. So, uh, sure, we're just waiting for a bit more leather to be produced. Shouldn't take us too long. We're just about there in a moment's time. And by the way, at the bottom right corner over here, you can see budding relationships and events. For example, Catherine Pelletier and Rolf Devine have met and now share the following relationship. Insignificant. But that can very quickly become significant. So it is something to keep an eye on as... We are now able to actually build the sewing workshop. Let's go ahead and get her done. And let's assign John to the task here, producing socks, clothes, keep thinking socks, but he does have a prerequisite number of uh, leather he needs before he can start producing it. So again, it's not just a one-to-one -one kind of a thing. There are, you know, uh, uh, production chains and stuff that you need to manage. And here you can see we can improve our base production as, you know, everywhere else. We can improve uh, working conditions as everywhere else. But we can also get recycling going over here. So we need fewer resources to produce our output. It's a very expensive upgrade, but I think it's probably a worthwhile one. So let's get that one done just so that we are producing our clothes a bit more quickly. And let's take a look at what we have to build next. A bakery. Okay, cool. Let's go ahead and build that. We've been collecting uh, grain for a very long time, right? We've got plenty of wheat, so we can get the bakery built right away. And I do believe we had somebody who would make a good baker. Who was it, though? Not Orsilda, not Rolf, not Patrick Lee, not Catherine. Uh, John's just a middling one. Okay, let's see if we can't find a better baker. John, go seeking a soulmate and perhaps more importantly, a baker in your surroundings. And, uh, oh, you know what? I mean, not the best, but it's an excellent match. And uh, and it's a, she's an all right baker. Would you grab my arm so I can tell my friends I've been touched by an angel? Man, I gotta, I gotta write some of these down. Um, but no, for real, they both dislike painting and meditation. Uh, she dislikes dueling. He dislikes flowers. Uh, he likes fishing, the art of war and dancing, and she likes the countryside, silver and gold, and music. All right, let's try it out. John and Yolanda both enjoy the pale moonlight. The unique moment allows them to get to know each other better. We can criticize the work of the realm's best painter or minstrels disturb the peace and tranquility of the neighborhood. No, she likes music, if I recall correctly, right? So uh, let's criticize uh, the realm's best painter instead. Good stuff. Yolanda doesn't really like painting, but she dislikes the ridiculous style of Lakeberg's so-called artists even more. Fair enough. Everything seems to be fine. What about a boat ride on the lake? 
Here we can either make fun of people more interested in their outfits than in their skills. Is that relevant? Or we can mention the nice countryside around Lakeburg. Oh crap, I can't remember. I honestly can't remember her likes versus her dislikes. Let's try the countryside. Okay, good, 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 good. They both adore the countryside. It's so vivid. They should go and take a walk around Lakeburg one of these days. Absolutely. And uh, for now, though, let's go ahead and grab a bottle. We could propose the idea of picking flowers in the fields. John doesn't like flowers. Yolanda has no opinion on them. Uh, or we can talk about uh, meditation. I do believe both of them hate meditation. So sitting on a cushion to meditate? Do these people not have something more useful to do? Let's try that. Beautiful. Excellent. Yolanda cannot sit still for more than two minutes. She has no patience whatsoever for this weird hobby. Very well. It's a match. Now let's go ahead and uh, say our I do's and congratulate them. And have Yolanda join in as our baker. Cool. Relatively slow production rate over there, but we can get this uh, efficiency upgrade in place. Produce bread a little bit more quickly. But now we can't afford any other upgrades, so we'll have to wait for Ernesto to come through so we can uh, trade some goods with him. By the way, apart from uh, these kinds of upgrades, money can also be used to increase your uh, stockpile size. Eventually, you'll start hitting your limits, especially for some of the more advanced goods. So uh, you'll want to spend uh, quite a bit of gold, actually, to increase your stockpile size, especially when you have larger and larger populations demanding more and more resources. Next up... We have the Mason's Workshop. We need 240 wood for that. Almost ready to go there. And uh, do we have enough gold, actually, to bring in additional people from the neighborhood? We don't. We don't. Okay, so that's a little concerning, because obviously children aren't around the corner or anything. But maybe Ernesto is, and, and, and hopefully we'll, uh, we'll be okay. We do have one artisan in our population, so they're generating gold once per month, or plus one per month, I should say. And that's where this uh, class becomes relevant over here because I believe, who was it? Um, who was it? Yolanda here is our artisan. Previously, I thought Rolf was an artisan as well, but he became a peasant. I saw the notification at the bottom right corner at one point in time, and uh, it just changes their morale impact. So everyone's kind of got uh, different impacts based on their class. And as you can see over here, um, John is on his way to becoming an artisan. In about 100 days, because he's been occupied as a seamster, he'll change his class, and so he'll start contributing to our gold generation as well. I mean, I'm... <laughs> Look, I, I personally, I find this to be so much more um, deep and involved than when the game was first revealed. I thought it was going to be a, you know, relatively simple and, and a handful of mechanics here and there. It's got a little quirky mechanic as far as the whole dating sim thing is concerned, and otherwise it's, it's you know, not too much, you know, not too wild and, or, or, or too... Uh, uh, too, uh, too convoluted or whatever word you want to use. But as I've been playing this game, I, I see all these moving parts and mechanics and systems and traits and skills, and I j it's just great. <laughs> it's just been fantastic. But yeah, Buddy over here is going to become an artisan. And I wanted to check what being a noble does. Did we lose our noble? Ah, we did, didn't we? I guess we did. I thought, yeah, we did have a noble, and uh, and he's lost his, his nobility, so I can't check what it would have done. But that's fine. That's fine. At least we're generating some gold. We are ready to build our uh, mason's workshop. What about uh, one of these two? Are they... Oh, yeah, you know what? Actually, Orsilda makes a decent mason. So why don't we go ahead and uh, flip things around a little bit? Let's go ahead and build the mason's workshop, and we'll get Orsilda in there instead. In order to do so, we'll have to... Uh, well, let me just check Patrickly over here. He, he's a he's a he, he's a mason of equivalent uh, skill, but he's a better lumberjack. So if we're going to remove one of the oh no, actually they're they're they're, they're, they're the same. Hmm. Well, Orsilda's been here longer, so Patrickly, you're about to be, be fired uh, after we get some money from Ernesto in exchange for meat. We got plenty. Deal. Sounds good to me. Uh, Patrickly, let's pull you off the line here. Mm, there we go. And let's assign you to the Mason's Workshop. Decent bit of stone coming through quickly enough. And let's go ahead and see what we're building next. A fisherman's hut. So maybe it's time to seek out an additional neighbor. Innkeeper, Mason, Mason Merchant, Lumberjack. Uh, not the best. We'll give it another month and a half. I don't want to spend money to replace these guys. I'm not in a rush necessarily. But it would be nice to get... Uh, you know, someone who's who's directly uh, good at what we're what we're looking for, right? We've got quite a few villagers already who uh, 
have a variety of skills, but I don't think we have a particularly good uh, fisherman or fisherwoman yet. Catherine's okay, but Catherine's a much better huntress, so I wouldn't want to replace her there. Uh, unless we find someone better, obviously. Yeah. So we'll just wait and uh, and see what happens. But the bakery over here is just not getting wheat quickly enough. Okay, over to the farm. Let's upgrade our efficiency, maybe. Or do we unlock a new position and try and get an additional farmer as well? That might be the right call, just to make sure we're producing uh, food quickly enough. Because as you can see, uh, the building consumption is 7. Production across our entire village is only 5. So obviously we're not able to keep up with our actual needs. Uh, all right, let's take a look at our neighborhood again. Uh, Broomy and Randolph. Carpenter, Builder, Seamster. Ooh, a very good Seamstress over here. Middling Huntress and uh, Middling Carpenter. Three and a half stars as a Seamstress versus three and a half as a Seamster for John. All right, looks like the next batch over here actually has Gabin, who seems to be a decent Mason. Three and a half stars from Gabin versus uh, three stars from Patrick Lee. So, you know what? Sure, let's go ahead and... Uh, and get Gabin in here for 48 gold. Sounds good enough to me. And we'll have to, of course, find a pair for him uh, for somebody to work at the fisherman's hut, right? So uh, I'm just trying to figure out, just trying to figure out, well, first of all, let's get uh, Patrick Lee fired. <laughs> Poor guy, keeps getting fired from all of his jobs. Let's get Gavin up over here and let's get uh, Patrick Lee back at the uh, Lumberjack's, uh, uh, Lumberjack's Lodge as we build an additional house uh, to put Gavin in alongside his uh, bow. So we have, we have what? One, two, three, four. Rather, we have one, two, three uh, couples who will maybe bring us babies. Um, I'm trying to remember where I can look to see if they are having children or not. I mean, they're, 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 they're ooh. Oh, this is sweet. I didn't even realize they were, uh, they had all this uh, history going on. Rolf can't let go of Ursilda's scarf. He finds it scent comforting. Rolf finds Ursilda exceedingly gorgeous today. Last night, Rolf let Ursilda take the blanket. Wanted to brag, Ursilda got wounded defending Rolf, who is perfectly capable of defending himself alone. Oh my, okay, this is interesting. And I guess this is where you get an impact to their overall affinity over time. Oh, that's... Huh. Cool. Okay. Um. Anyway, they are... Uh, have a very low chance of having a child. 15% chance of having a child. Let's take a look at our second house here. 0% chance of having a child. Oh, because their traits just don't go together. Oh my, okay. What about uh, next house over? 15% chance of having a child. Hmm, okay. You know what? I think we, uh, we need to try and maximize the, uh, the, the chance of children coming through. So for our lovely Gavin, let's find a soulmate. And, uh... Let's see if we can't find someone who is a decent fisherwoman in our surroundings. That would be ideal. Skip you. Butcher, guard, baker. Hmm, nah. Lumberjack, mason, butcher. Nope. Actress, painter, baker. Baker, guard, butcher. Decent mason. A equivalently decent as Gavin, but only an average affinity. Nah, not gonna fly. Good innkeeper. Good merchant. Good jeweler. You know what? Not somebody we need... Ah, bad affinity, unfortunately. I was going to say, not somebody we need right now, but when they do become relevant, they would be really good. Unfortunately, they do not get along, so nope, not going to happen. Li oh my goodness, that is adorable. Livestock farmer, butcher farmer. Uh, nope. Again, we got plenty of this resource, so we're okay. Just got... Ah, perfect. Fisherwoman. Bad affinity, though. God damn, why? <laughs> why, why, why? They're... Uh, their hobbies are uh, very much misaligned. Okay, fair enough, fair enough, fair enough. We'll find somebody. Another fisherwoman, average affinity. We might have to be accepting of this. They really don't have uh, anything uh, in, in common. And she's a middling fisherwoman at best. No, surely there's somebody better for our uh, darling Gavin. A good farmer over here. There's that, I suppose. No, nope, nothing worthwhile. Nope. 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 <laughs> This is what it feels like. Oh, there's a decent fisherwoman. Three and a half stars. That's actually pretty solid. And excellent affinity, too. All right, good stuff, Christina. Could you help me find my way? I got lost in your eyes. Ah, I've heard that one before. Uh, what do we have here? So they both like reading. She likes meditation and cuddles. He likes fashion and painting. She dislikes silver and gold, as does Gabin. And uh, they dislike poetry, dancing... Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Christina dislikes fishing, but she makes for a good fisherwoman. Hey, I suppose uh, experience is a good way to learn 
You hate uh, a potential uh, occupation, I suppose. Uh, okay, fishing, dancing, silver and gold, public executions, poetry. Are there dislikes? Let's uh, let's try it out. Try it out. Uh, I, I seek a dancing partner partner for Lakeburg's next ball. They don't like dancing, right? Talk about the importance of big cuddles in a loving relationship. Crap, did they? Oh, now I'm mixing things up. Uh, I think they like cuddles. Yes. Okay. Good. Not a problem. Christina is all for it. Say, why not start like right now? All right, Christina. Chill, chill. Everything seems to be fine. What about a boat ride on the lake? So we can talk about a charming fishing spot? No, I know she doesn't like that. Uh, let's get excited about great libraries instead. Christina learned Latin so she could read everything that came to hand. Oh, good for her. And what about uh, the moonlight? Yes, let's enjoy it as we talk about the importance of money. They both like that or dislike that? I thought it was dislike. I think they were okay on meditation. Talk about the benefits of meditation to focus on present moments. Let's try it. Yes, okay, excellent. She is keen on the subject. Why don't they look for some tranquil place to meditate together? Sounds good to me. It's a match. I do, and congratulations. All right, excellent. So, when we do build our uh, fisherman's hut, I will have somebody to actually work it. So it'll take some time for the stone to be produced. Bakery is still having some trouble over here, and I just wonder, just wonder if we can't maybe unlock another spot at the farm. Christina is currently unemployed. She's not a very good farmer. Can we find a good farmer? At least some time before we can actually bring somebody in. Fair enough, because we just brought somebody in, so there's a bit of a cool down to that, and that's okay. But we do need uh, we do need another farmer, and hey, we have a baby. We have a baby. Where's where is the baby? Who 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 made the baby? Susan. Who are your parents? Patrick Lee and Catherine. Lovely stuff. Lovely stuff. She likes the countryside, dancing, and public executions. Lovely. Dislikes poetry, gossip, and meditation. Cool. Zero years old. Oh, fragile health. That's not promising. Simple, not the brightest crayon in the box. That's cute, but brave. Without fear, there is no courage. Okay, so again, these traits will grow over time, and eventually, when they become six years old, I believe it is, you can actually go ahead and uh, assign them uh, a mentor. And, and so they'll, uh, you know, train their traits and skills accordingly to, again, secure future generations. But yes, I do need to keep an eye out for a better farmer. We have a decent farmer here with uh, Plectrude. Plectrude, and she's a noble, 25 years old, good lumberjack as well, fairly varied. We have enough resources, so let's go ahead and uh, bring you in, I think. Yeah, sounds good to me. We need an additional farmer, I think, so let's go ahead and get this unlocked, get uh, Plectrude this job, and let's make sure we are building additional housing for our newcomers. We'll eventually find, I think, a, a, a pairing for her, but for the time being, I think we're okay as the bakery is now going to have access to more resources coming through, but we do still have an unemployed future fisherwoman. That's what it is. Now you can see over here, we're actually maxed out uh, in terms of clothes, or, or not just clothes actually, but clothes, sorry, leather is maxed out. Okay, so I guess it just got consumed. It was leather and, 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 and meat were maxed out, but you know we, we could choose to upgrade them or uh, just let time tackle things for the time being. We'll stick with that for now. Where is our mason? He's doing okay. Three every, what, month or so? 62 days every two months. Wow, that is slow. That is very slow. It'll be forever before we can actually build the fisherman's hut. Can we get another mason? No, but we can. Oh, we, we can. She's just not very good. So why don't we just improve base production for the time being? So six every two months. Fair enough. Um, hmm. It'll take quite a bit of time. Let's speed time up a little bit then, I suppose. No, no, no need to, to go slowly. We can definitely pick the pace up a little bit. We're waiting for 20 stone, right? So right around the corner now. There we go. All right. Take time back to its regular speed. And let's build ourselves a fisherman's hut. Get this thing built. Let's assign Christina right away so she can start uh, catching some fish. Because I do believe some of our higher level individuals are just about to start needing fish, if I'm not mistaken. But yeah, I believe... Oh, actually. Huh. Interesting. So it's... Uh, it's not always the same. Well, what do you know? They're both peasants. So what determines their uh, their needs? I like it. I like it. This one's chasing after meat. This one's chasing after fish. No comment. This one's chasing after bread. <laughs> um, 
or the chances that worked out. But uh, but no, that's uh, that's 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 kind of cool. Okay, so they don't the progression is not always consistent. That's kind of that's kind of cool. Yeah, uh, but I, I want to find our noble. We just brought another noble in, right? And knowing my luck, he's already stopped being a noble. Dang, really? Oh, that happened so quickly. Or am I misremembering? Oh, there we go. Plectrude. Noble. So what, is, what does that do? It influences the amount of morale lost while working. That's it? Oh, okay. Fair enough. Fair enough. They'll become a peasant because they're working as a farmer. What can you do? Need uh, need that role filled, I suppose. And uh, what are we building next? A livestock farm. So we can either seek out a good livestock farmer, or we can seek out maybe a better... We got a decent mason. Decent baker as well. Everyone's actually kind of okay at their tasks, so that's promising. And look at that, Ursilda. Again, I'm fairly confident she was at three and a half stars previously, and now she's at four, right? Because I believe Patrick Lee and Ursilda matched when I was trying to figure out who to fire. So they do uh, uh, improve their skill over time. So this this is all well and good. Um, we need a we need a better fisherman or an additional fisherman, I suppose, or we can just upgrade base production here. How much more do we need? Hmm. Traits negative three. That's interesting. Sure, let's go ahead and upgrade you. So we're producing six per tick. And uh, that's at least in the positive. You can tell when something's in the positive because the frame around it is green versus the red frame, which means it is in the negative. Uh, I suppose we could seek out a pairing for Plectrude. I'm just trying to figure out what we need. I, I suppose a good livestock farmer is probably not a bad idea. Uh, John is a decent enough seamster. We could improve the efficiency over here. Not that much gold in our hand right now. Two artisans producing two gold per month. It's okay. But yeah, let's go ahead and seek a match for Plectrude, and maybe we can find a good livestock farmer. Let's find a soulmate. Let's go. Um, yeah, let's go for it. Surroundings. Trying to get uh, trying to get the next generation secured as well as best as possible. Uh, this guy's not going to work bad. Are you some kind of ma magician for you have bewitched me? I don't know if that really makes sense, buddy. No, gonna have to pass. Builder, carpenter, miner. Seamster, carpenter, guard. Mm, nope. Innkeeper, seamster, merchant. Farmer. Not a good farmer. Not, not a replacement farmer for the ones we already have. So, nope. Nope. Healer, bard, mason. Nope. Uh, something of a livestock farmer here. Excellent affinity, too. Neville, you're so sweet, you'd make salt taste like sugar. Sure, fair enough. They both like gossip, fashion, countryside, music, divination. Okay, they both dislike public executions. We got painting, reading, kittens, and desserts over here. All right, fair enough, fair enough. Let's uh, go with this and try and remember all that as we talk about... I don't remember money coming up. I don't remember baking and sweets coming up either. Dang. I rushed that, didn't I? Let's try this. Okay, good, it worked out. Whew. Plectrude and Neville agree, using the mill's good flour to bake pies instead of bread is a tremendous waste. Fair enough, time for a boat ride. We can make fun of people more interested in their outfits than in their skills. Ah, crap, I remember seeing fashion, but I can't remember if it was a like or a dislike. We can instead talk about the neighborhood's cutie little kittens. No, one of them dislikes kittens, I forget which one. So let's try making fun of people who are more interested in their outfits than in their skills. Good stuff, excellent. Nobody even knows how to dress in the morning anymore. The world is way too superficial for Neville. Good stuff, time for a bottle, and uh, let us relish in the latest rumors circulating Lakeburg. Good stuff, yo, I've been, I've been good. I've been real good. Alright, <laughs> it's a match, and uh, the I do's and the congratulations are in order. Cool, good stuff, good stuff. Keep an eye on our baby as well. One thing I will say, it would be nice if, uh, like, there are organizations here, like I could find the children, the adults, I can... I can organize this stuff quite nicely, but I, I do feel this UI is a little large for how often I feel, at least, as though I need to kind of flip through it. Um, like, there are filters, yes, but I feel like there must be a cleaner way to, to do this, or, you know, have there be a, a full-screen version of this. And, and maybe there is, and I'm just missing it, but just my uh, brief two cents there, my, my unsolicited feedback, I suppose. Susan, you are adorable, one years old. Waiting for you to hit six so we can start training you for some task or the other. Neville over here, I believe your only complaint is that you are unemployed. Let us prepare to build a livestock farm. Oh, it's almost time. Oh, time for a pony ride is what it's time for. Neville and Plectrude try to escape their daily life to spend some time together. 
Huttrude would like to share her growing passion for Neville by suggesting a romantic pony ride in the countryside. Yes, of course, we shall accept. We could refuse, something else will end up happening, but uh, let's accept. Budding romance, after all. Post-marriage. <laughs> to avoid offending Plectrude, Neville accepted her proposition. Unfortunately, his pony was the rebellious kind, and the romantic ride abruptly ended when Neville fell to the ground. Laughing out loud, Plectrude completed Neville's shame. Oh my. So Neville and Plectrude are both now offended. That's unfortunate. And Ernesto is here. He wants to buy some wood, and he'll pay us a fair bit of gold. Sounds good to me, as we are... Well, I think just a tick away now from being able to build a livestock farm. All right, I'm curious how uh, that impacts their relationship. If we take a look at relationship... No, no, no that's not how. We gotta go for the houses. Seek out their house. Plectrude and Neville. Okay, so that didn't track as a, as a moment in their history. Interesting, interesting, interesting. Okay. We'll keep an eye out for, uh, for those kinds of things. I'm quite curious. Let's make sure time is moving forward here. Let's get our... Uh, Next building built in just a moment's time. There we go. 300 and give me to give me to 40. That's all I need. One more step. Takes time, eh? Takes time. It's almost done. Again, we'll we'll probably build our next building and then speed time up a little bit just so I can showcase some of these events and stuff a bit more. And also uh, some of the drama that comes with uh, managing relationships. I've seen. I've seen some things. Let's go ahead and improve what? Let's improve. The, uh, the the output over here, let's add leather production as well. And let's also upgrade our efficiency just to make sure we are producing more animals and more leather. It takes a long time for one tick, so it's not like it's particularly fast. And uh, eventually, as we get this uh, achievement over here, we might want to unlock additional worker slots. And as you can see, they become more expensive down the line. And uh, certain buildings have uh, additional resources, not just, you know, wood in order to unlock additional slots. And the same goes for a mentorship as well. It gets more expensive. And I do believe uh, certain buildings require more than just wood to have additional slots unlocked. But uh, wood is very much a core uh, component to... Uh, to pretty much everything you'd want to uh, try and accomplish here. Looks like we are not producing enough fish or enough clothes. All right, over to our sewing workshop. And uh, do I want to seek out what? Ooh, got another... Nah, nothing worthwhile over here. Not going to spend the money to, to replace these guys. I'll just give it a month and see if some more viable options come through. Let's speed time up a little bit, though, and, uh, and see what we can uh, get for ourselves. Farmer, hunter, ooh, decent hunter, three and a half stars. Is that better than our current huntress? No, four stars. But what else are you good at, Catherine? What else could you possibly do for us? Nah, you know what, she's, she's at her best uh, best occupation, and she's good at it too, so we'll leave that be. And three and a half star farmer. Uh, better than both Plectrude and Rolf. Plectrude could instead be a lumberjack. Not that great at it. Uh, Rolf could instead be a... Butcher, a gatherer, hmm. I guess he's fine where he is right now, three-star farmer. He's a slightly better butcher. What are we building next? A mine. A mine. Okay, um, Balthazar's an okay miner. Ah, you know what, we'll wait. They're not good enough. They're not good enough for my luscious Lakeburg. We also need maybe a better uh, fisherman or fish fisherwoman. Could unlock another slot, could also improve our efficiency. Maybe not a bad idea. Uses a lot of our gold, though, unfortunately. But hey, it puts us in the positive. It's the sewing workshop, then, that's falling behind. That upgrade is quite expensive. We'll be able to afford it soon enough, but uh, something to consider, as another baby has been born. Roybin. Lovely little child here. What do you like? Clubfoot, smart, romantic, still believes in true love. I mean, zero years old. Even understand the concept. Uh, they enjoy feasting, fashion, and the art of war. They dislike desserts, the countryside, silver, and gold. Again, they're not super important just when they're born, but uh, it's nice to see what uh, what's what's coming out of uh, um, that sentence. Did not start how I intended it to. It, it's it's good to see the potential that's coming up. There you go, neighbors. What do we got now? Guard hunter, blacksmith, innkeeper, priestess, merchant. Nope, not worthwhile. Keep time moving forward over here. Yeah, I would like a, a seamstress, very much so. And additional meat production is probably a good idea too. Baby's on the way between Plectrude and Neville. That's good to see. And what are we building again? A mine. We have someone who's good at that. Ooh, uh, something of a miner here, Yvonne. 
again, not the best, but it's it's something. It right? allows us to keep moving forward. So let's recruit you. Let's go ahead and build our mine. And let's immediately assign Yvonne, whoops, come on, to this position here. And separately, let's go ahead and build a house for her too. Uh, oh, we don't have enough wood. We actually ran out of wood? Wow, I, I guess the mine kind of consumed it all. Fair enough, buy a new house. Let's get Yvonne living here. And let's see if we can't find a uh, pairing for Yvonne to, uh, to, uh, to uh, add to our capabilities, right? Innkeeper, merchant, miner. No, thank you. Teacher, bard, priestess. No, thank you. Intermason, actress. Nope. 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 <laughs> nope. Nope. Surely someone worthwhile will come along. Nope. Nope. Livestock farmer is okay, I guess, but uh, nah, not good enough. Not good enough. We got plenty of this resource on hand, so we're, we're okay. No, thank you. Uh, a decent seamstress, better than this. Uh, or a decent... I don't know. I mean, a, a seamstress is probably top priority right now. Probably. Ooh, but with a name like Arwen? That's tempting. Bad affinity, though. Nah. No can do. Decent fisherwoman. We could do with a decent seamstress or a decent fisherwoman, I suppose. Nope, not working for me. Not working for me. Nope. No, thank you. No, thank you. Come on. Surely. Surely we'll get someone worthwhile soon. Two and a half star seamstress is not good enough. Not good enough for my Yvonne. Or for my Lakeberg. Oh, no, we're good. We're good. Nothing. Nothing. Yeah, I've been getting I've been getting just really bad luck this uh, this run. Previous runs, things were working out very smoothly. Very, very smoothly. A decent miner. A decent fisherwoman as well. Lacking an additional seamstress, I suppose. Uh, you, if you, you, Femia is not a bad option, but average affinity as well. Baker Butcher Miner, but not good at any of them. Another decent fisherwoman, but average affinity. Dang. This bad luck, man. Really bad luck. Miner. No, bad, bad affinity. Still nothing special here. Nothing special. Mediocre Huntress at best. Uh, decent livestock farmer, I suppose. Produces more leather. Not something we needed urgently, though. Ah, uh, sure. You know what? We'll go with Farah over here. Middling seamstress. Best we can do. Uh, average affinity is not amazing, but we'll make it work. Their likes don't match, unfortunately. She dislikes feasting. She also dislikes dancing and reading. Meanwhile, over here we have dislikes of the art of war, dueling, and fashion. Gotta try and remember that. Feasting is a no-no. Dancing, reading, dueling, fashion... The Art of War. Let's try it. Let's try it. Um, talk about favorite songs, because I believe Farah liked music. Yes, excellent. They talk about their favorite bards and musical genres while enjoying the moonlight. We could talk about uh, books corrupting the young. I believe Farah disliked reading, or was it Yvonne that disliked reading? Let's try it. All right, good stuff. As it is, the young spend too much time at school. They should spend less time reading and more time working. Wow, all right. <laughs> time for a bottle. And I don't recall cuddles being mentioned, but that might just be me. Let's talk about importance of big cuddles in a loving relationship. Dang! Farah's embarrassment regarding the topic makes Yvonne feel more embarrassed. I was I was three for three all the way through, right up until the end. You can't win them all, but it is still a match. Just the uh, the love meter isn't as full, so you don't get all the benefits of the higher level uh, love meter, right? So. Fair enough, it is what it is, and uh, just, uh, I'm trying to remember how to actually get four. Because you get three through the dating, and I think affinity is what takes you up to four. Either way, we'll say our I do's. It's not ideal, but let's let the uh, wedding happen. Congratulations, and let's go ahead and uh, get our additional fisherwoman assigned. I thought you were, no, seamstress, right? Ernesto coming through with some money, sounds good to me. Um, got another baby on the way too. But hang on, Farah, where are you good at again? What's your, what's your deal? Seamstress, yes, okay. So, to the sewing workshop, let's unlock another slot, get Farah in there. And by the way, when you uh, put people in a certain position together, like if, you know, working in the same building and stuff, you can, in fact, yes, encourage uh, relationships and stuff, as Helen Brown has been born. What a cutie. What a cutie, nimble and shy, likes painting silver and gold and reading, dislikes dueling, poetry, and the art of war. Fair enough. Fair enough. I'm still rushing past us as the next order of business here is to build a forge to turn um, 
our mined materials, I guess that's just iron, yeah, into uh, into swords and tools. Didn't even realize swords were an option. I wonder, I wonder if war is actually a thing here. Uh, I am able to buy this. Do we have anyone who could work the forge, though? Um, weapons mastery and intelligence. I don't know if we're... I think I might have jumped the gun there. We have... Well, let's let time move forward, because I'm sure blacksmith is, is what we're looking for over here. No luck yet. I'll, I'll wait for a blacksmith to come through, because uh, why rush it? Why rush it? Uh, priestess, merchant, innkeeper, priest, actress, painter. No, no, no. None of you are any good. Not good enough for my lovely little village here. Oh. A sticky brew. Christina and Gavin have been chatting for hours at the inn. Suddenly, Gavin poured his beer on Christina, completely soaking the poor soul. How will she react? She could laugh, or she could smile politely. Uh, let's laugh, let's laugh. Let's make light of the situation. It was surely an accident. Seeing Christina laugh merrily at his clumsiness, Gavin apologized with a smile. Covered in sticky beer, Christina offered him to come to her place to take a bath. Wait, hang on a second. Christina, wait, hang on a second. Okay, they are married. These two are married. I was worried for a second there. What's your deal with uh, Catherine? You're an acquaintance, Susan? Insignificant, insignificant. Why is that represented with a sword? I was worried for a second because, yes, infidelity, adultery, all that stuff is in the game. You will see it from time to time. In fact, let's say, oh my. And uh, let's take a look at uh, let's take a look at some of our relationships. Do we have anything uh, questionable going on? Ooh, secret crush. There you go. See, Patrickly Noir Moustier here is married to Catherine, but has a secret crush on Yolanda and a secret crush on John too. Affinity of 82%, high chances of triggering a positive event. Over here, 82% as well. So, as you can see, his affinity towards Yolanda and 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 John is much higher. And over here, actually, who who is this? Who is this? A, a full-on crush, a not-so-secret crush on this individual with an affinity of 59%. So, this stuff can trigger events. You you can actually see some stuff go down. Uh, and I have. I have in previous playthroughs. I've seen some stuff go down as Ernesto comes through buying fish for money. Uh, yeah, sure, that sounds good. That sounds good. We could get some upgrades going, perhaps, then. Produce more clothes. Anything else that's kind of tight? Meat. Not the fisherman's hut. But the hunter's cabin. Could use an upgrade over here. Produce a bit more meat. We're still, I think, in the red. We need more vegetables as well, so let's improve our farms too. Okay, vegetables looking good. The bakery's not doing so hot, and, and our meat production isn't so hot either. So, might be worth maybe bringing somebody in for some of those tasks instead. Uh, ooh, I mean, Eric here is a decent hunter. Bring you in, buddy. Over to our hunter's cabin. Let's go ahead and get Eric working there and uh, and see what he can do. And we could perhaps bring an additional individual in as well from the surroundings to work as a miner. Oh, that actually... Oh, not a good affinity, though. That's not going to fly. A decent seamster. Average affinity. We could try it. We could try it. Do we need another seamster, though? Or do we need something else? Like a good fisherman. I think a good fisherman would be preferred. Guard, painter, carpenter. Or a, or a, or a, or a blacksmith or something, right? That would, that would be great as well, actually. If I can find one. Uh, decent fisherman, there we go. But awful affinity? Wow, I've never seen awful. I've only seen, like, bad or whatever. Alright, Christian here. Christian is a decent blacksmith. He's okay, and, uh, excellent affinity too. They both dislike gossip and divination. Uh, he dislikes fishing. Christian here. Uh, he likes the countryside, silver and gold, and dancing. Let's try it. Let's try it. Um, let's talk about rumors. That did not work out. Oops. Oh no, I'm doing terribly now. Uh, honor to be had on the battlefield. Uh, they didn't like divination. Neither of them did, right? So let's not do that. Let's go with this instead. A little bit of love. Good stuff. And finally, dancing. Money. Dancing. Money. Ooh. I seek dancing, a dancing partner for Lakeburg's next ball. Nice, okay, whew. What a coincidence. Uh, Christian happens to be an expert in Kroll, Estampi, and Tarantella. I recognize none of those words. He will be delighted to be Eric's dancing partner. Excellent, it's a match. Let's go ahead and um, marry you two. Congratulations. And now at our fisherman's hut. Hang on, why do we get Christian in here? He is, oh, he's actually a good blacksmith. Right, <laughs> oops. 
Let's build our, uh, our, our, our... Where's our blacksmith? Our forge. Forgot I already built it. Let's pop you in there. And the next order of business is actually our castle. Well, actually, the next order of business is to buy a new home where Eric and Christian can stay. And uh, separately, we can build our castle once we have enough wood and stone. 400 wood, 200 stone. 400 wood will require us to improve our stock over here because currently our cap is, uh, is 300. So I'll need a fair bit of gold to do that. And I do believe stone will have a similar requirement. No, we actually have enough room for stone. But, uh, but wood will definitely need an improvement to its stock. Let's have time moving forward. Let's accumulate our wealth. And uh, yeah, let's try and make room for, uh, for more wood. 300 gold, eh? That'll take some time to come through. Unless Ernesto comes through and, uh, and makes us an offer we can't refuse. But for the time being, let's just keep uh, producing these resources. Needs are largely being met. Bread is a bit of an issue. So over to the bakery we go. <sighs> Do I upgrade... Your productivity, it's expensive, and I was trying to save up for our, uh, for our wood. Let's say, oh, perfect. Oh, perfect. Yes, deal. Excellent. Sounds good to me. Let's go ahead and improve this. 600 is okay. way more than we need, but hey, why not? And uh, separately over to our bakery to improve our productivity. Let's also reduce the resources we need. Can't afford it. Fair enough. But hey, everything's looking pretty good aside from tools. The forge is producing tools. 32 every 190 days, so it's not all that fast. Yikes, and it gets consumed extremely quickly, eh? Let's go ahead and upgrade base production there. 59 every 190 or so days, so that's okay. But we're not producing enough weapons. In order to produce weapons, we would need to switch to multi-purpose here, which we can do. And there you have it. Cool. Everything is looking pretty good. We have enough uh, wood and stone to build our castle. Ernesto coming through, offering us a good deal. Sounds good to me. Let's build our castle. Kingship. Now, what is this? This is new to me. I did not get this far when I was previously playing. A prestigious family. Ensuring the royal family has some high stats, intelligence, strength, charisma, and dexterity will help the kingdom go in the right direction. The higher those stats, the more prestige the royal family will generate. Excellent. Choose your sovereign carefully. Once she or he sits on the throne, you won't be able to remove them from it. Very well. Taxes. Gold is important to meet the people's needs. Maintain a balance. The more gold you hoard, the more the population loses morale. Sounds about right. And satisfaction. Work in progress, but the sovereign regularly takes care of their people's grievances. Disagreements, rules, politics, you name it. Reaching an agreement does something or the other, but that's a whole element that uh, we'll not be able to see. So, fair enough. We have our castle established over here. And we also have an issue with Neville. He isn't well these days. His friends worry for him. Help Neville. Neville stays in bed all day skipping work and losing interest in everything. Yolanda, who loves to cook, would like to make him some special good mood grub. Christina thinks going for a walk in the countryside might help Neville feel better. That way he could breathe a little, and it would be a nice change of environment. Okay, Neville, what are your relationships? You are mm, infatuated with your wife, who you are married to, uh, and you actually don't have a relationship with these two, so that's kind of funny that they should show up as, uh, as individuals uh, to take care of him. He dislikes dessert... Dislikes fishing. Hmm. Neither, neither of the options really lean into his likes or dislikes. Good mood spread. Why is that in air quotes? <laughs> Replacive depressive with sickly. Okay. And uh, Neville and Yolanda become best friends. All right. A walk in the woods takes him from depressive to shy. And Neville and Christina become best friends instead. Let's go with shy as opposed to sickly. I feel like that's better. Let's go for a walk in the woods here. Christina brought Neville out into the open air, away from the foul smell of the village's workshops. Neville enjoyed the daily walks and eventually became accustomed to the forest's tranquility. Out of newfound preference, Neville grew more and more distant from the other villagers. Ugh. Okay, that... I mean, when you put it like that, shy sounds... quite unfortunate. But, if we take a look at our royal family over here, you want to have somebody with a high leadership trait. That makes sense. We have nobody free. So I guess this is a job in a way. You have your kings. They'll have their children as well. Uh, you've got your taxes. Every 30 days, collect X gold while impacting morale. Okay, sounds good. You'll have dukes, counts, and miscellaneous. So lots of titles to deal with. And there's a whole second page dealing with a royal line from an ex-consort. Oh, excuse me? That's curious. That's curious. All right. 
the air will automatically take the succession. Wow, okay, so this is a full-on, it's not like you can just hire and fire and replace. You have to deal with their children and stuff and everything. So you got to be careful. And, and I guess the mentorships and stuff become that much more relevant when you've uh, got an established royal family. But what comes after the castle? Ah, so I suppose that would then be the end of this next fast demo. And with this rather curious uh, set of decisions to be made, I suppose I wouldn't mind getting something in place before we call it a day here. So Oriana is noble. But a capable farmer, livestock farmer, and innkeeper. Can I see your traits? I can. What is your leadership like? Hmm. Nothing Nothing showing anywhere. They are a noble. Mahu is a peasant. What do we got over here? Precision work. Lead oh, decent leader. 68%. Just short of nice. Uh, Oriana, you don't have leadership, right? You do not. Okay, so you know what? It'll have to be the peasant king, Mayhew. Let's go ahead and recruit them and uh, put them in charge just to see what that actually does for us over here. 15 workers operating simultaneously is another achievement, apparently. And so they're producing a ton of prestige. Excellent. They have no consort, no relationship to be uh, considered there, and they have no children, obviously. They've just arrived. They'll be collecting taxes, and it seems as though we cannot explore dukes, counts, and miscellaneous uh, in this build or until we accomplish something or the other over here. But folks... Uh, with a king in place, I suppose it is time to call it a session and the end of this showcase. And there you have it. We have indeed completed the demo. With 1,851 prestige to our name, it says over here we can play multiple generations and develop our village even further in the final game. So yes, there are of course more buildings to build, there are more resources to explore, there's much more to do beyond what we saw at the end of this playthrough here today. With that said, I hope you enjoyed seeing Lakeburg Legacies in action, and if you like what you see here, folks, as I was saying earlier, please don't hesitate to add the game to your wishlist. It's a great way to support independent developers especially, and it's a great way to stay up to date with the dev cycle of the game to make sure you know when it's releasing into, you know, early access or 1.0 or whatever else they're up to. Again, you know, check them out on their Steam page and, uh, and add them to your wishlist and give them a follow if you find the, the game compelling, because, uh, I mean... It's just, uh, <laughs> it's worth celebrating interesting and, and, and fresh games, and boy, is this not fresh. I thought it was extremely compelling. I really like the ideas on display. Uh, I wish I could have showcased some of the uh, kind of adultery and infidelity aspects. I saw the beginnings of it in a previous playthrough, but unfortunately, uh, no such luck with today's run. But I do hope you enjoyed this video, folks. If you did, please don't hesitate to uh, leave a like down below for the uh, adorable sheep and chickens, if not for uh, anything else. And again, if you would like to stay up to date with interesting colony management, city building, strategy, and sim games, you might want to consider subscribing to this channel as well, because that's basically the uh, core of what I do here. With all that said, as always, a massive thanks goes out to all of the channel members and patrons who've been supporting the channel on a monthly basis. They'll keep us alive and running smoothly. And of course, a big old thanks goes out to each and every one of you for watching. Until next time, cheers.